Hello, this is Terry Norrington from Kunganisha Ministries, and this week's message we are going to be looking at enemies. We all hope that life would be bliss. We can go that we can go through life with no hassles and that we can get along with everyone we meet. Wouldn't that be nice? Everybody got on with everyone else and life was harmonious. Unfortunately, life doesn't work like that. Jesus says in John 16, verse 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Sometimes troubles will come from circumstances, and at other times they will come from people. When we look at the book of Job, we see that Satan causes much of what tests Job. God allows it to pr prove his faith, and Job doesn't let him down. Despite all these circumstances, Job gets through these tests, and in the end, ends up more prosperous than before. And his so-called friends didn't help, accusing him of having been sinful, otherwise he wouldn't be punished the way he was. Who needs friends like that? But these were tests for Job. They weren't punishments. However, we all have people who seem to be against us, people who will test us and seem to be our enemies. They will have personalities that simply clash with our own, or they may be trying desperately to get ahead of us for promotion, or they just do not agree with our values or visions. Inevitably, we will come across enemies, and probably more than once in our lifetime. King David, throughout his life, had adversaries. Because he was the youngest amongst his brothers, his brothers didn't always make life easy for him. I'm sure we all know the story of David and Goliath, where David, still a boy, slays the mighty Philistine giant, Goliath. David became a mighty warrior and commander in the Israelite army under the kingship of Saul. But King Saul detested David's success and saw him as a threat to his sovereignty. So Saul sought on more than one occasion to kill David. And in later life as king, David found that his own son Absalom turned against him and led armies against his own father. It probably won't be until we find ourselves in heaven that we will stop having enemies, stop having adversaries. So how in this world do we handle such people, those determined to come up against us? We can use the examples of David as he overcame his enemies. God was always with him and he respected, honoured and worshipped God. Psalm 138, verse 7, David says this, Though I walk in the midst of troubles, you preserve me, my life. You, you stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. Before the boy David faced Goliath, he had spent much time in the fields as a shepherd, in the presence of God. He had prayed to God and contemplated his words. So David knew God well. He knew God would protect him. God walked with David as he faced his enemy and God had tra trained him in his upbringing as a shepherd, knowing well how to fight off wild animals using a sling and shot. It wasn't David's strength that defeated Goliath. It was strength of God through the skill of David's hand that overcame his adversary. And it saved the nation, the nation of Israel, God's chosen race. <clears throat> David writes in Psalm 37, verses 1 to 5, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. As King Saul pursued David, Saul rested in a cave. Unbeknown to Saul, David was hidden in the back of that cave. While Saul slept, David had the chance to kill King Saul, but he refused to do so. Why? Because although God had already decided that Saul was no longer fit to lead the people of Israel, David still respected God's decision that his anointed king was still the king of his people. David did not question God's decision. He abided by it. King Saul did come to his dem demise eventually and David became God's anointed king. But it was done in God's time and not David's. And Psalm 109 verses 1 to 5. My God whom I praise, do not remain silent. For people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. They have spoken against me with lying tongues. With words of hatred they surround me. They attack me without cause. In return for my friendship they accuse me. But I am a man of prayer. They repay me evil for good and hatred for my friendship. Absalom turned against his father King David doing all kinds of evil and spreading hate against him. He rose up an army and tried to kill and dethrone King David. But Absalom was not God's anointed leader, and eventually he too came to his demise. Upon hearing the news of the death of his son, King David wept and grieved, because despite all the evils that Absalom had tried to inflict on David, David still loved his son. So we can see that David handled his enemies by walking with God, honouring God and using God's wisdom. He was very much in touch with God and, because, and became one of the Old Testament's great leaders. So let's look at some of Jesus' teaching, starting with Luke 6, verses 27 to 36. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you either? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is a very powerful and thought-provoking passage. How easy do we find it to love our enemies? How easy do we find it to forgive those who hurt us? The worldly logic would be to seek revenge, to seek justice, to seek recompense. But to do this would be, to be the easy path to take, walking through the wide gate. As Christians, we know that we should walk through the narrow gate, the path that isn't easy. To love thy enemy goes against all human instinct, but it isn't worldly instinct that we should that should guide us. It should be the Holy Spirit. Exacting judgment and punishment are not for us to take, but it is God's judgment that will eventually be taken. After all, the Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 12, On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something, thirsty, give him something to drink. 
In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. And let's look at Luke 17, verses 3 to 4. So watch yourselves. If your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times a day, and seven times comes back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Again, this is something that seems to go against all human instinct, but Jesus' ministry was very much about turning the world upside down. If somebody sins against us or harms us seven times a day, but says sorry each time, then we must forgive them each time. Remember, though, that despite all our best efforts, we sin against God probably many times a day. It not, might not be intentional, and probably most of the sins will be in thought, but we repent of these sins and God forgives us. If God can forgive us in his mightiness, then we can forgive those who harm us. So let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for these words. We thank you for your message about loving our enemies. Yes, Lord, this is a hard thing to do. So we turn to you, Lord, to help us in our, in our help, need to be able to forgive others, in our need to be able to love our enemies. Help us to find that in our hearts, Lord, to forgive all and to love all, because we ask this in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.